Dr. Siddhant Bhargava, welcome to the BBC Asian Thank you Network. so much. How thank are you? Thank you for having me. I am good. How are you this evening? I'm really well, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me because I know that your days are really busy uh, meeting all these A-list high-profile celebrities <laughs> and literally telling them what they should be eating. Yep, that's my job. So describe what it is that you do. Um, so technically by, by, by education, I'm supposed to be a doctor, but I don't practice clinical medicine anymore. And I'm sort of like a weight loss doctor for India. Uh, my job is to get people in general into shape. And fortunately, um, I deal with a lot of people who, who we see on screen and it's my job to get them uh, in shape. You run the most popular food supply company <laughs> for these celebrities. Just give us a, a taster of some of your uh, A-list clients that you handle. Uh, so... Usually, I deal with um, Alia Bhatt, Sara Ali Khan, um, Ranbir Kapoor, Amit Saad, Bhumi Pednikar, Jacqueline Fernandez, Katrina Kaif, if I'm lucky. Uh, so these are usually the ones that I deal uh, with on, on, on an everyday basis. But of course, there are a lot of contractual assignments that I do, wherein they usually come, with me, uh, come to me with a small problem, say for two months, for three months, and then eventually they go back to somebody whom they've been consulting for a very long time. So I'm usually like that SOS, right. that it's not happening, Sidhan, do something. Uh, <laughs> I do that as well then. But certainly for the clients that you've been with for a long time, like Sarah or Alia, how does that kind of happen? Because this is a profession and this is a special that didn't really exist in Bollywood 10 years ago. Hmm. Like you didn't really hear of yeah. uh, Bollywood stars having nutritionists or dietitians or people advising them on what they should be eating. Hmm. I think about 10 years ago, the craze was having a celebrity trainer. Uh, trainers were really um, in the picture about 10 years ago because you had, say 20 years ago or 15 years ago, you had Salman Khan coming in and doing his shirtless scene in right. for, for the song. And then eventually he kickstarted the entire movement. But um, I think in the last two or three years, it's become cool for Bollywood also to have nutritionists around which is why I exist. It all started, I think, with Sara Ali Khan, where uh, randomly uh, one evening I get a call from uh, this very young girl who was shooting for her first movie. And she was really frantic uh, that uh, she needed to look camera perfect because as you see it, Sara Ali Khan's been through a drastic journey where she used to be 96 kgs early and she's come back to this size and, and how, like she's looking gorgeous. She, she gave me a call and she actually mentioned to me that she needs to look perfect because as you know, the camera adds pounds. I don't know if you're looking a little fatter in this camera now, <laughs> but the camera does add pounds. So I met with her and uh, I, I, I made her lose a, a decent amount of weight in a very short amount of time. When you say you made her lose a decent amount of weight, how do you make somebody lose okay. weight? Okay, so uh, about three years ago, uh, I just come out of medicine and I was, I was reading about the ketogenic diet and nobody in Bombay or probably nobody in India was really doing the ketogenic diet. Of course, the hardcore fitness enthusiasts and the influencers were, but nobody had really taken it to a, a larger scale. So, so keto is high fat, low it's carbs. It's high fat very, very low carbs and a moderate amount of protein. So the idea is you convert your body into a fat burning machine. Uh, nobody was doing that. Now I started with that and I think Sara from somewhere must have heard that uh, there is this boy in town who's doing the ketogenic diet and he's actually built an entire company around it. So she came to me and that's how it started. And we did do keto initially for her. She doesn't like the ketogenic diet a lot. Um, she just doesn't like a lot of celebrities just don't like being on keto. It makes them cranky at times. So uh, I made her lose that weight by actually sending her the food. So Food Darzi is your company. So food Darzi is my company. This is a company that supplies food to the celebrities yes. in kind of plastic boxes, yes. essentially. So Sara Ali Khan started using Food Darzi meals initially. And of course, once she lost that uh, chunk of weight, she realized that, okay, keto is probably not for me. Then uh, Sony auntie came along, Sony ma'am as I call her, uh, who's Alia Bhatt's mom. Uh, then came Alia because Sony ma'am actually told me that, you know, uh, my daughter, she didn't actually call her Alia back then. She said, my daughter, uh, you know, wants to get on to something like that. So and you're like, you... which of the two is it? <laughs> like, is it the A-list star, the one who like millions of people watch every day? <laughs> And you know, I I tend to play it really cool. Then she finally used the word that Alia actually wants to speak to you and she wants to get onto something. And 10 minutes later, I get a call from, from Bulgaria and it's Alia on the phone. And in my mind, I'm like, I am speaking to uh, Alia Bhatt. But you went to school with Alia Bhatt, I right? I went to school with Alia Bhatt. At that time, nobody knew Alia Bhatt's going to become Alia Bhatt. Right. So, and this is when I was 22. So I still hadn't seen the entire Bollywood. I still hadn't matured enough to deal with all of them. And I'm speaking really coolly with her. Yes. Uh, so this is what we're going to do. And inside, I am jumping. I am <laughs> literally jumping that I'm speaking to Alia Bhatt. So uh, Alia then flew back to Bombay. I met with her, explained to her everything. And she find this, found this really cool that you know somebody who's who's um, her age uh, who's from her school 
uh, it has actually started this company and is going to help her lose weight and then alia became a friend and alia became a client and then um, i really love alia for doing this but alia is i think my biggest proponent in bollywood she actually does recommend me to a lot of people because let's face it it's convenient for the actor so even if you're on set the food's just going to come to you don't have to eat the dirty set food that you're usually served hey people say set food is really good it's really good because it's really oily like i've had <laughs> set food it's really really tasty what's normally the food on set Oh it's like a buffet. Right. It's it's huge. So based on the production value of uh, of course uh, the movies with these A-listers the set food is extravagant. So you've got like say five starters and then you've got Chinese and you've got Thai and you've got Indian and you've got dessert. So it's usually really widespread and that's why they really have to control. You are the first person that I have managed to identify as a leading nutritionist in Bollywood. You're the first person whose name has been brought up again and again as somebody that these stars hmm. trust. But like you mentioned you are really young. You're 25 years yep. old do you have to tell them off sometimes like when you know that a star is not following the diet plan I you've do. given them I do. you do? I do again i'll give you a little insight into this uh when you deal with stars that are probably above the age of 35 when uh, they already have that entitlement because they've been in the industry uh the ones who haven't made it really big big i'm not going to throw any names here <laughs> but say uh shahrukh khan is the p- nicest person you'll meet because he knows who he is mm. but when somebody is trying to creep into the a list when they're still not there but they've been in this in this industry that's when the most tantrums and attitude comes out right because uh everybody is a little insecure and at times you tend to act out so that's when the the real tantrums come in but with the younger stars because of social media and them being so accessible they can't be rude and they can't throw tantrums so they're nice to me also because at the end of the day i too can be an influencer and i too can tell people that you know they're not nice <laughs> it's the truth they they have to please every single person that comes their way because let's face it if you don't please people they're not going to come and watch your films so when it comes to telling them off i will start with, with uh interrogating them actually because what happens is that you you sort of know what you want to tell the person but eventually when you start when you have a lot of questions thrown at you you slip once so right. my strategy usually is to let them slip because if i so i know the reason like if they've been they tell me that i've been following the diet to the t and we've been working out exactly how you've told us to and they still haven't met with that result that i'm expecting i know that they have cheated <laughs> uh the only way to get uh, like to address that elephant in the room is to sort of get them to say it because if you accuse them you could probably lose your job <laughs> so i still haven't to come across a situation where i've had to accuse them of doing something wrong they usually do tell me which is why when you uh, speak about alia um she was recently doing an ad for fruity and um she's really strict with her diet like each time she cheats she actually messages me saying that sid i've consumed this what should i do is this a way of living life sid is this a is this a way of like uh like she's calling you after she's drunk a juice Right? So okay I can actually defend her here the thing is that I'm not saying it's her fault because this is, she's a, it's her job and she needs to look good but like for normal folk listening to this right now at home wherever they are like they'll be hearing that Alia Bhatt a leading actress who they look up to has to think about every juice drink that she consumes that's a very tough and disciplined way you know, to live life know, right it's it's a very diffi- a disciplined way to live life but she has to do it because at the end of the day she is alia bhat what is a normal uh, alia bhat meal alia like, is probably alia going to eat alia bhat day like in the morning if she's in a good mood she probably just eat of uh, eggs with oats if she's in a bad mood she'll just skip her breakfast her lunch would probably be say paneer makhani with roti and her, really? absolutely so this is where i come in right like my job is to ensure that alia eats exactly what she wants to eat she needs to eat normal food because being this way is is gets toxic like there's a condition so we've heard of anorexia we've heard of bulimia this is called orth- orthorexia so orthorexia is when you calculate every single thing that you do incessantly because you need to maintain that body image you can't let an actor get there because because if they're focusing about all of that how do they focus on their acting so i need to make sure that i withdraw all of her attention from things like that uh, and i take all of that attention there so that they can be absolutely casual about their food because somebody else is already calculating everything for them so i am the orthorexic individual whereas the actor i try and not make them that way but i'm sure if one person eats paneer makhani with roti every day for lunch they're not going to look like alia but so what are you doing in that paneer makhani to make it right for a celebrity to be able so to you know eat. everything boils down to calories i mean that is uh, that's the universal truth if you can control your calories you you've got it in the bag but at, at with that being said the way these calories are actually portioned out really matters because 
because we were speaking about this earlier that Alia needs to be an actress at the age of 40 and at the age of 45. Yeah. So if Alia needs to gain weight for a certain role, she has to have the capability of losing that weight at the age of 45. So every single meal that is sent to her is so perfectly balanced when it comes to macronutrients, your fats, protein and carbs that I never let her metabolism get sluggish no matter what. Uh, Sara Ali Khan, for example, uh, really likes her gulab jamuns. Now, if I were to put Sara Ali Khan doesn't eat any gulab jamuns. Of course she does. Of course she does. <laughs> Sara Ali Khan, she can out eat me. Really? Uh, we spoke about this. I'm 6 foot 4. I right. weigh 100 kgs. Yeah. I have a massive appetite, but on some days Sara Ali Khan can out eat me. So she does have a massive appetite and she loves food, but she has to control. So Sara Ali Khan loves gulab jamuns for example. Now if I put one gulab jamun in front of her, there is no way that you can stop at one. But if I actually put one baked that is a muffin in front of her she would have to stop at one because the density and the fat that i'm introducing in her stomach will just control her her hunger always satiate her for the next 4 hours sure so paneer makhani for alia she, if she's eating say one roti and she's eating that paneer makhani with the gravy is really rich i make sure that that gravy is rich so that she can't eat any more of it because if i made sure if i said that okay let's not make the gravy filled with butter and cream she probably would want to eat a little more of it because it's not filling her enough but i actually load her gravy with a lot of butter and with a lot of cream and i balance out this excess fat somewhere else how we where would you balance it out then or maybe her dinner meal would have no fat at all usually how a dietitian works or a nutrition works is a nutritionist works is that you give them generic options or you give them options that okay maybe you know you eat this or if you don't find this you eat that but for all of these stars what i do is that i actually chalk their entire day out with time with recipes with food everything so if you think about it i actually know what sara is eating on monday and i actually know what alia is eating on tuesday at 6 pm that's how precise i get which nobody else actually does so i'm actually divulging uh, my 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 trade secrets <laughs> with 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 people but this is what i do so if you look at say even ranbir's plan or even if you look at bhumi's plan it's going to say monday breakfast with the exact meal that she's supposed to eat now so while so i'm going to snitch on bumi for a second because sat in the seat that you were she had paneer tikka with me from this hotel how so, do you know that i didn't tell her to that's the point i knew that she's having that paneer tikka because bumi told me so this is this is what it is oh i just snitch her up it didn't work <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing so as long as i know i'm in control they know that they're in control because i know exactly what they're up to so because she was very clear actually before she even arrived here that we needed to order a paneer tikka so you knew i knew i knew i knew i knew that she's going to be eating a paneer tikka at that point in time and you knew it wasn't going to be one of yours that you had yes, sent her yes 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 and that's okay and that's okay because i know that this paneer tikka is not going to be completely completely controlled when it comes to calories because of course they use a lot of things in there but uh, at times it's okay so uh, bhumi for example has is not on a diet during the time she was shooting with you all at that time she was on her so called off <laughs> wherein she was trying to eat healthy so she wasn't really counting every single bit that's why the paneer tikka was okay but did she finish the plate of paneer tikka precisely but isn't that really disappointing i mean you mentioned the term body image and it's really important especially in 2020 we're going through a time in the world where we are promoting body positivity mm. where where we're trying to encourage people to feel more comfortable in whatever body shape or body type they are but when you're your icons your idols your heroes are under such such kind of tight disciplined routines and are eating such specific foods to look and maintain a certain image isn't that disappointing they're not all trying to look thin like i should actually uh, put this out there like they actually do it for their role um but then every role is requiring them to not look thin. always so there is this actress who's who's up and coming her name is radhika madan so she's she's very critically acclaimed she's now, an angrezi medium that's yes, coming up yes yes she's precisely yeah. now for angrezi medium she's actually playing a school girl which meant that she had to look small but there was this uh, there was this film that she did before that called pataka yeah. where she actually had to look big now between looking small and looking big i know that radhika is comfortable with something in the middle they don't always like looking that thin and that's what the people also need to understand that uh, they don't always like looking that thin ranbir was actually shooting for this for this film right now where he had to look really big this is now Shamshira. you know everything i have to it's my job it's my job and i have to make sure my listeners know everything as well so he's shooting some share out yeah moment. so now there are certain scenes where he has to look really big now i like looking big but ranbir doesn't like looking big so 
they just do it for the role and eventually they understand uh where they're comfortable and then they talk about it so if you've realized in these past two years where body image has really become a major scene where um it's sort of become cool to address body image issues also most normal people have started realizing that there's a difference why they're normal and they're not a bollywood celebrity plus bollywood celebrities have also come across and come ahead and spoken to them that do not idolize me like they're But always they are idolized though right they are so idolized they are, are idolized alia sara bhumi rambir these people are idolized so you know what now every about... every overweight girl looks at sara ali khan and says i would love to have the sara ali khan transformation that's true that's true but sara has been very open and honest about how she got there also right i'll give you an example 25 years ago uh, when there was no social media and these celebrities were inaccessible to the uh, to the to the public whatever small thing that got printed about them is what the general public uh, swore swore on like if if salman khan said that i drink uh, a glass of coconut water which is chilled at 18 degrees centigrade everybody was going to follow that yeah. <laughs> but now because social media is here and these actors are so accessible the general public does have an insight into the inside lives of these actors everything is not what it used to be 25 years ago but that makes people believe that they can emulate those same results but then at the same time they're also talking about reality like sara ali khan is very open and very honest saying that i quit my pizza and i quit my junk and i quit my ice creams and i love my besan ke laddus and i love my gulab jamuns and i love my pizzas but at the same time i'm on a very strict diet where i have to control everything that i eat and i have to eat no carbs so she's putting all of the information in front of the public but she doesn't have dr siddhant uh, bhargava giving her the <laughs> diet plan and giving her uh, so the, the other people watching that don't have yeah. those facilities yeah. so what i'm asking is do you ever feel conflicted about being in this industry because there are girls out there who have body image and not just girls there are guys and girls out there who have body image issues because of these artificial images that are created yeah this is where i retreat and i say yes that's true i mean it does happen and um, unfortunately i don't see it going away uh, the only thing that could possibly happen is that if people like us who are actually on the inside of this industry could probably come out there and speak about it in a non programmed way in a non planned manner when we're still staying true to our work not actually saying something that the actor or the actress wouldn't want us to but uh, it could be a smarter way to go about it because maybe the actor or the actress doesn't want to divulge this information themselves but they can probably have people like us do it for them where the image is still held but the reality and the actual way of going about it is actually put out in the public so they're also staying true to their audience and we're also straight staying true to humanity in general and then we don't feel that we're part of this dirty industry people come to you with the idea that they're going to lose weight or they're going to get to the body shape that they need for a particular role but you can only do so much from the food aspect mm. when it doesn't get delivered from the the fitness aspect mm. do you get the blame or how does that work like have you ever been fired at by a celebrity because they've not achieved the goals that you they know, need you know so here's the thing if a celebrity doesn't trust you and is is not very close to you uh, they're not going to sack you they're right. just going to not call you back right that's how it works so this industry is very very fickle uh they do consult a lot of nutritionists at the same time also <laughs> they do it they do it they do it because and you know it and i know it uh, it's happened in the past where uh, they did come and tell me about it and i was a little taken aback eventually uh, they they just stay with me <laughs> but i did know about them consulting other nutritionists as well and sometimes they don't even tell you now if i have pissed somebody off or if they don't like what i'm saying they'll first go and consult somebody else and if somebody else feeds them what they want to hear i'm out of the picture so there is never any firing that happens in this industry they just don't call you back and it's very disheartening because you've invested so much but at the end of the day if they don't think you can't get the, you you can't you can get the job done they're just going to move on to the next person whom who who they think will get the job done does that take a toll on your it mental does, health it does it does it does it does i mean uh, it it happens that uh see you can't be needy because uh they know that they're way more popular than you are and they know that everybody on this planet is trying to use them so this is one thing that i've maintained uh i find it extremely awkward or uh i feel shy in even asking them for a picture because at the back of my head i know that if i ask them for a picture they know that i'm asking them for this picture because i want to put up on social media which is going to get me likes so i just try not doing that which is why on my social media the only two people i have pictures with is alia and sara because i'm really really close to them i i can't ask anybody else for a picture so 
दिस इज हाउ इट इज लाइक यू कांट बी नीडी एंड एट द सेम टाइम यू कांट बी इफ दे हैव इन मैसेज यू फॉर अ मंथ यू कांट बी द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू मैसेज बैक सेइंग दैट हे यू हैव इन मैसेज मी फॉर अ मंथ इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट बिकॉज सी you probably in your head know that they're not messaging you because they don't want to so sometimes mind games it does it does, there, it, does right? it does it does i mean it sometimes if you're on a bad day and something like that starts happening you know you've lost a client but then it's not an ordinary client it's it's somebody whom you've idolized probably it's a big account it's exactly so it does take a toll on me as well it does i can imagine i want to talk about holidays and vacations because i know you've said that the busiest and craziest time is either before a uh, one of your clients is going on vacation mm. or just after they've yeah. come back how does that work because i'm guessing are they still on your diet plan when they go no. on holiday so at times uh, if they know that they've got something coming up they will ask me for certain general guidelines now most of the times i try not giving too many inputs because they need that vacation and when i look at it from a diet point of view i need them to go off a diet at certain points in time because they're constantly on some kind of a diet can they actually eat whatever they want oh uh, with that being said there's always this there's <laughs> I knew always there was a catch there is a catch there is a catch <laughs> they always know that there is that nagging feeling at the back of their head when they know they can't overeat so when i tell them that do whatever you want it means that eat whatever kind of food that you want but they know that they can't overeat finally then can you just bust some myths for us myths that we think exist in this industry that we think celebrities are losing food for uh, are losing weight from and whether they really exist Hi everyone my name is Dr Hassan and what I would advise is any of these procedures and um, techniques you are about to hear today please make sure you do not do these at home make sure you seek medical advice from your doctor or physician some of these can have serious side effects as well The first thing that doesn't exist is that uh, people think that to get into that shape they're starving themselves they're not like as i mentioned Alia does eat paneer makhani they're not starving themselves with that being said a day before the shoot or two days before the shoot they do end up consuming very very little food at times they will also consume something known as a diuretic to actually get what is that so a diuretic means it's going to get all of your excess water out of your body you actually just so urinate it, it out to... it forces you to pee essentially a camera does add a lot of pounds it it makes you look a little fuller i had never heard of this thing before yeah so an actor consumes two things or maybe three things right before a shoot one of them is something known as a diuretic which is to get all of the excess water out of your system so that you look much crisper and much or uh, sharper and more chiseled than you actually are and this is done by males and females both diuretics are medications designed to help lose fluid from the body these are essentially designed for people with heart failure and fluid overload they should not be used for aesthetic reasons to try and lose water um, before a photo shoot for example the reason is because as i've suggested these are medications that work on your kidneys they can help lose water but also help you lose essential salts so these salts are needed in the body if you end up losing all these salts not only will you be dehydrated you'll feel more tired you can feel really unwell and if you lose too many salts you can have irregular heartbeats and other electrical activities in your heart The second thing that they do is that they start cutting out salt completely from their diet maybe 3 days before a shoot which is something a lot of pro bodybuilders also do to look to get in shape. The third thing that they do is they cut off carbs completely because carbs also attract water. The fourth thing that they do which is another drug uh, or a medicine I wouldn't call it a drug because that it's going to raise certain alarms. Yeah. Uh, they're going to consume something that makes them uh, clean their bowels out completely because they don't want any kind of uh, bloat at all or any so, kind of fungus. So okay you're just being polite by saying you're going to give them diarrhea basically. Uh, yes. uh that does happen that does happen and i don't advocate it personally but it happens and at times i have to stop it because you have to make them understand that they can't keep doing it because it's healthy it's not it's not healthy because you're messing with a uh, a lot of systems in your body so when you speak about diarrhea a lot of models actually inject themselves with typhoid to actually get them diarrhea to lose weight it, it oh exists it all exists in this industry this is terrible this is absolutely terrible it happens it happens it happens so this is what a lot of actors will do these are very unhealthy ways of trying to lose weight and reach your goals because not only do they evacuate everything from your bowel which is the obviously the um the bad stuff but also your good um, nutrients that are evacuated as well so in the short run yes you may feel suddenly you've emptied your bowels but with chronic use and laxative abuse we have many patients who come in with many medical problems such as uh, colitis where they're having long term complications of the bowels and sometimes they even undergo surgery so if you're trying to look good for a six pack and you're abusing laxatives don't be shocked if you end up with an operation and having a massive scar across your abdomen because we tried to take out part of your bowel another myth that that people think is that uh this is going to give me some flack but a lot of actors are on steroids also 
and it's it's a fact because at the end of the day they have to change between shapes so often that a normal individual with normal human physiology cannot do it so they have to take anabolic steroids as they're called um and if you if you if you think about it some of them aren't uh they don't hide it but they don't divulge it because people around them know about it it's 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 weird to get into six pack ab shape and then suddenly become fat and then get back into that shape so it's not like they're doing it naturally they are consuming things to do it this is a very dangerous substance that everyone needs to realize it's not a quick fix the way steroids work they go inside your body and they increase the cell the most active muscle in your body is your heart so your heart is always pumping and if that starts getting steroid it gets bigger and bigger on the inside as well which means that eventually your blood flow gets less and less around the body and this is why a lot of um bodybuilders who abuse steroid die at very young ages in the 50s because they get sudden uh, their heart attacks because their heart cannot cope their heart start failing so this is something i have personally seen even in people as young as 22 who have died because they've been abusing the steroids to get big fast but the side effects are that it can affect your fertility in the long run especially with men um it can increase the risk of prostate cancer which a lot of you probably didn't know um heart failure I've mentioned later on in life there's risk of getting baldness with this um there's something called gynecomastia where breasts can develop in men as well rather than having muscle so there's a huge amount of risks involved in steroids maybe my third myth would be that uh that actors look like actors all the time uh, it's completely untrue uh, they take a lot of treatments to stay the way that they're looking which is very very needed because think about it there is tons of makeup on them there is tons of product on them it does take a toll on their skin and they have to keep getting a lot of treatments done to 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 actually keep up with this and when i say treatments these treatments are not restricted to just creams and maybe a, a, the one off botox there are actually a lot of injections that they take to keep to keep up uh, like for example uh, antioxidant injections like glutathione is a major scene in the bollywood and in the hollywood industry because of uh, this anti oxidation is actually preventing them from aging the drips work by giving you vitamins minerals and nutrients so do you remember earlier on i mentioned about using laxatives you can get rid of the vitamins and minerals um this way we're putting them back in so the drip is a very safe and effective way if done properly by a doctor or a physician please don't try and do this yourself because if you get a bubble of air into your vein you can die just from a bubble this is how serious it can be an actor's life is not easy it's very difficult they're always walking on ice they're always tensed they're they're very insecure at times so it's not easy being an actor like of course the glamour is uh, is is what people say that we're willing to die for it but it's it's not easy you have to understand these celebrities is their job to look good they're in front of the camera all the time now people like me and you are not in front of the camera all the time so we do not need to be pushing our bodies to that limit and that extreme without medical support because like i said the risks are so dangerous and i see so many patients in my clinics who are either coming with balding problems or they're you know having infertility problems where they can't conceive and have children and they're having other um, issues which we need to give them medicines and these can be lifelong so for that short period of happiness you don't want to sacrifice the rest of your life and if you do feel you're suffering from this there is a medical condition known as body dysmorphic disorder and if you feel you are suffering from this then please see your gp or your um, physician for further advice because there may be underlying psychological issues that we can help you with what are some maybe two or three really basic things that i can implement in my life uh just really small practices that maybe i could introduce that would help me achieve maybe a better or faster level of weight loss everything boils down to the amount of muscle mass that you hold on your body so when i speak about muscle mass it doesn't mean uh, the biceps and and the triceps it just means that there's a certain tone to your body that you need to hold on to muscle is the most active tissue in your body if you've got more muscle on you your metabolism is faster if your metabolism faster you can keep working around with it so when you go on a diet and uh, you're on a really restrictive diet you're actually losing a lot of muscle which means your metabolism is getting slower which means eventually you're going to get fatter really fast and then to lose that weight is going to take a long time so my only tip is consume more protein and get some kind of resistance training in because if you can maintain your metabolism you've killed it like you've actually cracked this question because if you can control your metabolism if you know what your metabolic rate is if it's fast 
you've done it you will never ever put on weight for the rest of your life sidant this has been an absolutely fascinating conversation thank you so much for My your pleasure. time and your insights and uh, i look forward to seeing your next transformation of the next big <laughs> star as well thank you thank you so much for having me here if you enjoyed this like and subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up to date for more great audio and video from the bbc listen on sounds watch on iplayer